All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the forge slash shop uh, where we do all kinds of cool things. Did this hammer in my last video, finished it up anyway, it was the last two videos. Uh, I haven't changed the handle on it. I figure I'm going to give it a go for a little while. If it doesn't work out, I can always make another one. And uh, But I'm going to go ahead and use it the way it is. Uh, before we go too far, we got the forge warming up over here. Uh, I need to warm up my hammer surface because today we are going to start on the knife. And uh, so I need that. I need to get my little block in there, get it warming up. Uh, but before we get carried away here, I got some mail today. Thought I'd show you all what came in the mail. One of the things I've wanted and needed the most. <laughs> Look at that bad boy, huh? That's really going to be nice. I mean, that's that's some good stiff bristles. That'll really clean up my, you know, up until now I've been using this little, I guess more or less just a painter's wire brush. These bristles are so uh, soft. They don't really scrape the, uh, they don't really scrape the forge scale off like you would like. And uh, I think this is going to work out very nice. Heavy block of wood too. I was surprised when I got it. I thought maybe it was going to be, you know, some cheap piece of pine, but that's actually a good solid piece of wood they use. I don't know what it is, but it's a good solid piece of wood. Uh, so that should last me a while and uh, work really good for me here in the shop. I got my stamps. I have uh, eighth inch stamps and I found that they're just too small for most of the things that I do. So uh, I wanted a little bigger stamps that'll be a little bolder so you can see what I stamp. I can see what I stamp on my work. So those came. Uh, uppercase letters and numbers 0 through 9. Uh, actually there is no 9, you just turn the 6 upside down I believe, but uh, anyway, numbers and letters, and we got this, uh, got us some uh, refractory cement. This is, this is a tub ready made. Uh, if you watched one of my last videos, you heard me complaining about uh, I could have bought a bag of this stuff from from a cement place here in town in Salt Lake City, but they wanted $53 or something, I think, for like an 80-pound bag. And I don't need 80 pounds. I mean, that forge doesn't weigh 50 pounds, you know. So uh, I ordered that, and uh, it came in this morning along with these other things. So... Very cool. I'm excited. Got some new toys to play with here in the shop. And uh, so here's our piece of steel. It's just a piece of uh, leaf spring. 5160 is the consensus. And uh, it's a little thicker on one end than the other. We're going to take this over the vise and take our angle grinder and clean it up. And then we're going to take this bad boy right here. And weld it right to there. I'll clean that up a little bit too. And I found that if I heat up my steel that I want to weld my handle to, and heat up the rebar that I'm going to use for my handle, uh, the welds take way better. Uh, when I first started welding handles on my projects, uh, I'd get two or three heats in, and my handle was starting to break off. And uh, so through a little trial and error, I figured out that if you heat both of these up just a little bit before you weld and make sure that this end of this rebar is nice and clean. So I'll take and cut this off. This is just some old weld that I did my, uh, this was just a big glob of weld on the, end of the, on the end of this from a previous project. And this is what I was pounding on with my, uh, with my new hammer the other night to test it out. So uh, we'll zip this off, clean it up. We'll clean this up, get it welded on there. 
get our anvil heated up. Love to preheat my anvil. It was pretty cold last night. This thing is like ice. So rather than fight my stock cooling off so quickly, I'm not. Some people say that if you strike on a cold anvil, you can crack it or chip it. Uh, that's the least of my worries. This is a solid big chunk of iron here. Uh, I don't believe that that would ever happen. But what does happen is when you lay your stock on here and this anvil is this cold, it sucks all the heat right out of your stock. You don't get very much work time between heats and you end up in the long run using a lot more gas in your forge, a lot more heats and getting very little done for quite a while. And if you just take some steel and throw it in the forge and heat it up and lay it on here, it tends to uh, tends to warm that anvil up nicely and you get a lot more forge time out of the heat. So, all right, we'll get this anvil heated up. We'll get things ready to go. I appreciate you joining me today and let's get to it. on the center of this. Sleeve springs are bowed, you know. We just want to get that flat to start with. Now all this back here is just going to be wasted material. We want to kind of draw this out a little thin this out. Pretty good size piece. I may have gotten more than I need here.
Well, we're getting her drawn out pretty good. Uh, this thing gets too long for my Ford. So, uh, I'm going to have to go open up the back of the forge, and I think my tank is just about out. So we're going to have to change our propane tank. And, uh, and then I'm going to have to open up the back of the forge so I can stick this through because we're getting, uh, we're getting uh, too long. It doesn't want to eat much of it. And uh, I need to be able to work back here, but I can't get it in the forge long and far enough.
done here is define where our paper grip is going to be, right behind the retosso. The retosso will be right there. Now we're going to work on this hang. And uh, that's a lot of steel. We're going to thin that out quite a bit and get it down to a more workable size.
guys, we're calling it for tonight. Here's what we've got so far. Now, my tank is kind of shaped the way I want it to be. I like a rounded, I don't like a straight tang. I like a little curve in my tangs, you know. Just feels better in your hand. And uh, it's a little rough still. And probably a little bit meaty. Uh, we may come in here and stretch this out a little more and thin it out a little bit. But look at the difference in the tang and what we started out with. And this has been thinned out quite a bit. But there's quite a difference in that thickness. And uh, in retrospect, I should have cut a smaller block of steel. Uh, but I just cut out a block of leaf spring and start pounding on it, you know. And, and actually what a guy could do, I mean, you know, there's nothing that says uh, that you can't cut out the basic shape of your knife out of that leaf spring and save you all that pounding and beating. I mean, this was just a square piece of leaf spring, if you'll remember at the beginning of the video that I showed you that we started out with. And to move that steel that much, I mean, there's a lot of steel to move in here. This is worse than drawing out reins on a set of tongs. Uh, way worse. This is way thick and wide, and it's really hard to get it narrowed down and where you want it. But we're not gonna we're not gonna narrow this up. I mean, we're gonna narrow this up a quite a bit up in here too, probably about the same width as a tang. But I want to leave it nice and meaty. I mean, even when I make like a clip point uh, hunter or a camp knife, I like to leave some meat on the bone. You know, uh, I like a good heavy spine and a heavy knife. Um, Something that when you pick it up and hold it in your hand, you know you can either chop into a tree with it or slice paper, whichever one you're, uh, you need to do, you know. So uh, there that bad boy is. Uh, look for part two. We'll call this part one of uh, forging out my knife here. And uh, I don't know. Uh, it'll probably be like kind of a semi-chopper camp knife type of deal. Kind of looks like a cleaver right now, doesn't it? But uh, uh, I just wanted to get the, get this hammer going, and I'll tell you what, I'm really pleased with this hammer. It works quite well. It's not as heavy as that as the power hammer there, the three pounder that I refer to as the power hammer. But uh, it's not as heavy as that, but it's heavier than the two pounder. I think we got it pretty close to where we wanted it. This rounding head works really well. Uh, this flat, the flat head may be a little bit too flat. I may want, want to dress this a little bit because I've noticed if I don't hit it perfectly flat, I'm leaving some pretty sharp hammer marks. So I'm probably going to dress this uh, flat, flat uh, part of the head up a little bit. But overall, I couldn't be happier. This hammer hardened really well. There's absolutely no damage whatsoever to either of these heads. She's got great rebound. I mean, I love this. I love it. And uh, I couldn't go buy one like this. I, I could get close. But uh, it just feels good making your own, you know? And uh, I don't have the means or the drift or, or a striker and all that you need to punch a hole in a piece of steel or I'd just make my own. Uh, maybe one day I will. I may just take it upon myself to punch it myself. Uh, you know, you can always drill a couple of holes, pilot holes, and then all you basically have to do is knock out that middle and drift it out. And I can make a drift. So I may get set up to where I can actually just forge my own hammer. It would be kind of fun. But for right now, this one works really well. I'm really happy with it. So uh, once again, as always, guys, I really appreciate you joining me in the forge today. Had a good time getting started on this knife. Uh, this isn't the knife for my buddy up in Washington that I've been talking about. It's just been a while since I banged out a knife. So I just wanted to knock one out. I'll probably just keep this knife. And uh, I just wanted to kind of knock one out and get back in the swing. It's a whole different ball game making a knife that has to be beautifully flat. You know, uh, it's much different than banging out a a hardy fuller or uh, you know something of that nature that uh, doesn't have to be perfect you know so I wanted to test my hammer out I wanted to just beat out a knife here and 
and uh, you don't really see it in the video but I've beat on that a long time today that, that was a heavy piece of steel and a lot of steel to move so I am pretty much give out my hand hurts uh, I got some pretty good calluses in here and they start to get sore after a while and uh, and I have to work tomorrow so I need to kind of call it an early night and uh, and uh, get some things squared away and ready to go so I can go, go to work tomorrow. And my real job actually makes some money. Uh, the unemployment thing just kills me. I just, uh, I don't make near on unemployment what I do on my job. So I'm happy to be going back to work and making some money again. Uh, but on the downside of that, uh, the videos will be slowing down because all this time I've been off work, I can come down here and make a video pretty much every day, you know, because I'm home. And, uh, and I don't have to mow the lawn or anything right now, it's winter time, so we haven't had a lot of snow, so there's no sidewalks to shovel or any of that, so I've been coming down here almost on a daily basis and uh, doing these projects, whatever we do, whether it's making tools or, or uh, whatever, you know, uh, repairing the belt grinder or cleaning the shop, you know, all manner of things, so, so uh, the videos, if I go back to work steady, which I don't think I'm going to be yet, I think they're just kind of rotating us and letting everybody get a few days here and there uh, so they probably won't be coming as often but but they'll still be coming so tune in to see part two of, uh, of this knife build and uh, appreciate you being here hit that subscribe button give me a like and uh, we'll catch you on the next one